Hello and welcome to this tutorial in which I will be painting the Kill Team Marina terrain features. All parts have been primed using Chaos Black through a rattle can. And I'm gonna start off with the barrels. I'm using Parasite Brown through an airbrush. I just give them a complete coat with this. The Parasite Brown is a nice starting color for yellow. Um, then using Scrofless Brown, I'm using a Xenathal highlight to uh, get the initial, initial yellow tone on there. I make sure the shadow stays in place underneath the rings on the model. Next using a mixture of one part scrofless brown and one part white. I apply a highlight to the, to the barrels and I do this in the exact same uh, method as, uh, as before to keep the shadows intact. In, uh, Because the yellow is a bit whitish now, I use moon yellow and I mix this with airbrush thinner in a 1 to 1 ratio. And I carefully from a distance dust this on top of the previous colors. This will make the yellow more vibrant and more the color that I was looking for. Then using gun metal, I block in all the metal rings that um, go around the barrels. And then using old copper, I paint in the imperial eagles and the skulls on the barrels. Then I used Agrax Earthshade and I washed both the metal rings and all the uh, old copper parts, that, uh, the skulls and the eagles, just to get a shadow in place or make the shadow a bit stronger where I, uh, where I needed that. Then using silver I highlight the metal parts. And using dwarven gold, I do the same for the golden parts on the model. Next, on to the doors. I use dark grey blue, and again through the airbrush, I coat the entire model with this. Once that has been applied, I take pale blue grey and again with the airbrush I apply this in a zenithal highlight, leaving the darkest recesses untouched uh, by this, uh, this way of painting and having a nice initial shadow in place. And as you can see, you don't need to be super neat. Then using long beard grey, I apply a rough dry brush to, the, uh, to the, all the grey parts just so that something interesting is going on for the eye. Next I used gun metal and I painted in all the parts that I wanted to be metallic. Then I used AK Interactive Streaking Grime and I mix this in with White Spirit uh, and I 
looked for the consistency that I wanted for this. And as you can see I use a bit of white spirit in a cup and I just start adding the grime to it until I have the color that I want. And then I just smeared it all over the doors. Do this in a well ventilated area, this stuff stinks and can give you a very bad headache. In case you get a result you don't like, use a little bit of white spirit and uh, something like a, uh, a little bit of cotton wool or something and just clean it up a bit. Next using Brassy Brass, um, this is the next day. Um, I always let uh, the oil products, the enamel products dry for at least overnight, but preferably over a day. But using Brassy Brass, I paint in the doors. And then I took Neelac Oxide and I just slapped some on the door. And then using water, I spread this out. Once that's dry, I use silver and I give a rough dry brush to the, to the door. It's not really a big deal if you accidentally hit the metal parts. So it's not really noticeable. The, um, the silver will get, get, give the door a more worn down look and effect, especially when you put it on the table. Um, looking at it in a close up, it doesn't look that good, but when you put it on the table, it will do exactly what um, is needed from it. Then using turquoise, I paint in the large light for the OSL effect, the overspray is, uh, is meant to be there. I then make a mixture of one part turquoise and one part white. And now I reinforce this color on the inside of the actual lamp. Then using white, I paint the light on the other side. And again, I go a bit on the outside as well to get some, uh, some light effects going. And I do the very center of, um, of the bigger lamp on the other side of the door. And then using light red, I go over the lamp on the, uh, on the opposite side. Just get the orange like color in there. And then again using white. I just paint a little dot in the center of the lamp. And then I use Lamater Yellow and I coated it over the over the lamp to finish the effect off. Then onto the crates. Over the black primer I sprayed German Red Brown uh, primer. I thin this down a bit. And again this goes through the airbrush. I wanted this set painted, uh, painted uh, pretty fast, so I tried to airbrush as much as possible. Then I applied a coat of chipping medium over the over the crates. And after like 10 minutes, I let it dry for roughly 10 minutes, I go over the chipping medium using black. It's not really a big deal if a little bit of the red brown stays visible in the, in this stage. Next I used olive green and I sprayed over the black. With all these coats is just get it on there. Um, there's no um, technical airbrushing or painting involved, it's just spray it on there. Then I use camouflage light green and I apply the highlight. The splattering normally you don't want, but in this case it wasn't that big of a deal. Therefore I didn't clean it up. Once that paint is dry, I use just water and I coat the entire model with it. And I give it a good coat. This will activate the chipping medium that's underneath. And now using a very hard, uh, brush with hard bristles, I just scrape some of the paint off. As you can see this goes really fast. 
Um, I tend to do this without thinking about it. Just do it. Uh, um, get the damage in there. It will give a more natural look to the battle damage. Once the water is dry, I make a mixture of one part camouflage light green and one part white. And I'm going to apply a highlight to all the scratches and damages and um, bits and bumps on the crate and paint in some extra scratches. And then I'm going to make a, a next oil wash using rust streaks and again the white spirit. And when I get the consistency that I want for this, I just again put it all over the model. Once that's dry, again, uh, waiting overnight, I use Viking Gold and I paint in all the golden rims on the, on the crates. And using old copper. I painted the uh, eagles again. Uh, this is just the same thing as what I did with, uh, with the barrels. And I'm sorry if I sound a bit off. I've, I have a bit of a cold and a sore throat. So, um, once that coat has been applied, I use Agar's Urche and I wash in um, the golden parts. Uh, not the Viking gold, but the old copper part. And once that's dry, it's back to the dwarf gold again, and apply a highlight to the Imperial Eagles on the other crates. As far as the other crates go, with the uh, which have the Adeptus Mechanicus clock on there, I just use black and white, but um, that will be shown later on on the other uh, items. Then using Victorian brass, I apply a rough highlight to the Viking gold parts. And as you can see, this is no science. Just I just pick ran some random spots and put a bit of paint on there. That finishes off the crates. Then it's on to the last sort of like container thingies and that pipe. Um, I started off using steel again through the airbrush. I just coated the entire model with this color. And this is a a little bit of a glossy light color, so um, you'll have a um, a different surface tension after this color. Then using blue tone, I wash the entire model with uh, with this. Um, in case it pulls somewhere or leaves nasty stains, um, I later on dry brush that over. Once it's dry, I just dry brush it over with a little bit of steel, but I do that far uh, far more into painting the model. So once dry, it looks uh, roughly like this. Then I use dark flesh tone, and I use this to block in all the parts that I want to be red. It took me a couple of coats to get good coverage, and it, um, um, due to the um, changing surface tension, um, it really was a yeah, it was a bit difficult. I should have perhaps sprayed a bit of a matte varnish on the on the model, but using gory red, I paint over the dark flesh tone, and then I used metallic black, and I paint in this uh, this vent part of the model.
next using black right black I painted in all these little screens on the model And then using non-oil, I wash this uh, this part of the model. And then using old copper, I blocked in all the parts that I wanted to have a gold-like color. And here you see me patching up a little bit of the uh, blue spots that I didn't like with just some steel. I then made a mixture of one part gory red and one part bloody red and I applied this in a, as a highlight on all the red parts. And again I go over it a couple of times and I make sure I spread the paint out nicely all over the place. Leave a little bit of a shadow visible uh, to watch the cables and the rims and the edges. For these little cylinders it was a bit easier. I'm just drawing a, a line. Then I used wolf grey and I blocked in the, the cables with, with the ripped effect on them. And using bright bronze, I painted the big one on the, on the red pipe part. Next, I used Coelia green shade and I went over the wolf gray parts, um, just using a wash on a light color like that. Uh, will is an excellent way to highlight those type of cables. Next, I use silver, and I use this to highlight the these metal parts. And I just go over the raised areas quickly, as you can see. Next, I used Agrax Earth Shade. And I went over the golden and the bronze parts just to get some shading in those areas. Next, using black and white, or dead white in this case. I painted in the, the mechanica skull, the cock wheel. If this would have been a model, um, I would have actually built these colors up, but uh, because of it just being small trade features, uh, this works just as well. Again, back to the bright bronze, and I'm going to highlight the most raised areas on that big cable, running to the over the side of the of the red pipe part. Next, I went to dwarven gold again, and I highlighted all the golden parts on the on the models. And as you can see, I do this pretty roughly, uh, just to get the effect in, just to get a little bit of change of light, uh, and then it's okay already. It's gonna look good on the table anyway. 
Next, I use some Typhus Corrosion. Uh, I never used this, so I just I saw this as an opportunity to, uh, to give it a shot, and um, I just smeared some in the bottom of the venting part. After this, I applied a dull coat to the to these pipes, and once that was dry, I used some Nurgle's rod to get a little bit of an oozing and dripping effect from the from the pipe. And that finishes off these models. Um, one last thing as far as the doors go, the orange light I later on decided to put on some Tamiya clear yellow just to enhance the effect a little bit on the, on the lamps. And this is the complete end result. Well, clearly there's more parts, but that's not going to fit on the turntable. And this gives the, uh, the idea of how it all looks. Um, on the table it works excellent and gives the effect that I like on my table. Uh, so, I hope you liked this tutorial. Um, please like, share, subscribe if you want to. Um, leave a comment if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to say thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.